Hi, I'm Colin Lapin. And I'm Mike Bagrin. Welcome into this week's edition of the Eagles Nest. The Brockport football team would get out to a first quarter lead against Montclair State this past weekend. Was quarterback Joe Scabilli's return enough for a Golden Eagle win? Women's soccer still searches for the, for the offensive niche and might have found some overtime rooks, but from who? And volleyball looks to turn things around as a freshman begins to make her defining mark as a Golden Eagle. All this and more coming up on the Eagle's Nest. Welcome back into this week's edition of the Eagles Nest. We switch on over to the Brockport football team who took on nationally ranked Montclair State at Bob Boozer Field. Tied at three late in the first quarter, Joe Scabilia launches this 14-yard touchdown pass to junior Joseph Innes, and the Golden Eagles took the lead 10-7. Things were still looking good for the Golden Eagles, tied at 10 late in the second quarter, but Montclair State would intercept Scabilia and put together a 65-yard drive that was capped by an 8-yard scoring pass to give Montclair State the 17-13 lead at the half. Late in the game, Brockport had a chance to take the lead, but tough luck for all you Brockport fans as Joe Scabilia throws his third pick of the game. And the Montclair State Redhawks would come out on top 20-13. Scabilia went 39 of 63 passing, breaking the previous record of 58 pass attempts. Scabilia had 353 passing yards, which was the fifth most in school history. However, Scabilly would throw three picks, putting him at nine on the season. Brockport hits the road to take on the College of New Jersey this Saturday, and you can hear the game live on 89.1 The Point, starting at 11.30. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, see how men's and women's soccer did this weekend against Oneon and New Paltz. You're watching the Eagles Nest on BTV. Brockport sports fans, don't forget to check out your home Brockport sports action as Brockport football takes on Kane University here on campus Saturday, October 15th at 1 p.m. All this, all this, all this, all this and more, all this and more coming up, coming up, coming up on the Eagles Nest. Welcome back into the Eagles Nest. Friday afternoon, the Golden Eagles women's soccer team looked to get back on the winning track. Erin Asquith would put her best effort forward in the game, and she would make four saves in the day to keep things at zero heading late into the game as Brockport offense continued to struggle. And the struggling offense proved to be a factor in this one as Oneana found the back of the net with under six minutes left to play to take the game 1-0. Saturday, the Eagles took on New Paltz and again the offense struggled. They would get a chance early where Maria Malone would find some room in the middle of the field but get stopped by the New Paltz goaltender. And they would not score a goal in regulation. But fortunately, Aaron Asquith would not allow a goal in regulation, making five or six saves on the day in the first 90 minutes. And in overtime, as seconds click down with just 14 left to play, Sarah Lawson gets the ball to Sarah Petrie, who knocks it in for the Golden Eagles 1-0 victory in overtime. As the Eagles move to 2-2 two two in Suniac play. Switching on over to men's soccer, where the Duff man, Brian Duffy, would score on a penalty kick late in the first half to tie Oneonta at one, but senior Kyle Son would give up not one, but two goals in the second half, and Brockport would fall to the Oneonta Red Dragons three to one. The loss gave Brockport their first loss in Suniac play. Could Brockport rebound from the loss? Well, we'd find that out on Saturday, where Brockport took on the New Paltz Hawks. Brockport would get outshot by New Paltz 17 to 11, 
but there were only three new Paltz shots on goal compared to five for the Golden Eagles. Marathon native Aubrey Brown crossed the ball with a lot of bodies around it and sophomore Bobby Ross would head it in and Brockport would come out on top against New Paltz by a final of one to nothing. Brockport is now 3-1-0 in the SUNYAC Conference. Cross Country headed to Geneseo for the weekend and for the men it was Josh Kuhn leading the way with an 8th place finish and a time of 26.57 for a team finish of 2nd place. On the ladies side again Chrissy Walnowitz led the way she had a time of 23.50 for a 10th place finish, which would help the ladies finish with a team place of 6th. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, both the field hockey and the volleyball teams had a ton of non-conference games. Find out how they did. When we return, you're watching the Eagle's Nest on BTV. Hey folks, I got a surprise for you. ATV towels. For when your college TV diet spills into boredom, the plain program won't soak up your laughs like the fun driven program of ATV. Watch this side by side comparison. ATV, the laughter picker upper. Brockport sports fans, don't forget to check out some Brockport home sports action as Brockport women's soccer faces Cortland and Oswego Friday, October 14th and Saturday, October 15th. Welcome back into the Eagles Nest. Brockport women's field hockey would host Nazareth Tuesday afternoon and Nazareth would get an early chance on Casey Schreiner who would make a big save here to keep the game knotted at zeros for the moment. Till Brockport would get the opportunity to take a lead with a cross that gets a little out of control. Gina Steffen was there to bring the ball back into play, where we would find Kellyanne Henry, who finds the back of the cage to take the 1-0 lead. Later in the game, the 63rd minute to be exact, the ball makes the way to Kellyanne Henry, again, who can't quite finish. But Megan Usher pounds in the rebound, which would be all the scoring in this one, to lead the Eagles to a 2-0 win. Madison Buckley would have the assist on the first goal, and Casey Schreiner made 11 saves in the effort. Saturday was senior day for the Golden Eagles, and Jessica LeBou, Kellyanne Henry, and Amanda Del Buno would be honored before and after the affair. They helped the Eagles fight hard for a victory, but Geneseo came out to a 2-0 first half start that put the Eagles in a hole that was just too big to get out of. The Eagles would fall 2-0 despite Casey Schreiner's 10 saves. Golden Eagles field hockey is 5-4 overall and 2-2 two two in Suniac play. And we switch things over to volleyball. Wednesday, volleyball looked to turn their luck around against Deuville College, where they did not allow Deuville to ever reach 20 points in a match. And they ended up winning 25-19, 25-16, and 25-17 to take a 3-0 victory. Kelly Nowak would have eight kills on the day, but freshman Jessica Senek would lead the way with nine kills in the win. Thursday, the Golden Eagles had their eye on another victory as they took on Alfred. In the first match, it would be Kelly Nowak leading the team to victory, getting one of her six kills on the day en route to a 25-22 first set win. In game two, Jamie Snyder would grab several of her six kills on the day, like this one here, which put up the Eagles 22-6 and ensure a match two victory. While in the final set, the Eagles would again dominate but the ace here would be Jessica Senek, who led the way throughout the day with seven kills for the Eagles. Senior Kelly Nowak gave us her insight as to why the team did so well today. We just kept up the energy on our side and we focused on our mistakes and fixed our mistakes and just all kind of built up from there and it was, we just dominated. Golden Eagle Volleyball moves to 8-13 and 13 on the season and 1-3 and three in conference play. We'd like to thank the Brockport Sports Information, our crew here at the Eagle's Nest, and all of our fans. We're going to send it to a, go a Flying Eagles highlight. For Mike Baggerman, I'm Colin Lapine. You're watching the Eagle's Nest on Brockport TV.